In this video, I'm going to explain the different ways in which we can format fonts in Excel. Now, let us begin with changing the font face and font size. The ribbon is a convenient place to change the font face and the font size of this text. Therefore, let me use the ribbon on the Home tab. The current font face of this text is Calibri and the font size is 11. I want to change the font size to 12. For this, I have to click here and select 12. Now let me show you how to remove previously applied formatting. You go to the editing group, click on the clear icon, and select clear formats. Observe that the content in the selected cell has reverted to default, which is Calibri 11. Now, let us see how to change the font style. You will find the style icons on the font group of the ribbon under the Home tab. For bold, select icon B here. For italic, select icon I. For bold italic, select both B and I icons. Next is the font color. By default, the font color is black and it can be changed by clicking on the font color icon. In most cases, changing the color from the ribbon is the easiest. You go to the ribbon and click on the arrow to view the standard colors and theme colors. Towards the bottom, there are more color options. Let me show you by changing the font color of this text to blue. Now you can see that the font color has changed to blue. Next is the underline option. I'm going to select a cell and click the U icon on the ribbon. You can see that the cell content is underlined. In this video, I'm going to explain how to change the alignment of contents in a cell. On the ribbon, this is where you find the vertical and horizontal alignment options. Under the vertical alignment, you can see top, middle, and bottom. The default alignment is bottom. Let me change that to top. But you cannot make out whether it is the bottom or middle or top. It is because the default row height is too small to display the vertical alignments. Let me increase the row height. Now you can see that the contents align towards the top border. Or let me change it to the middle alignment. Now the cell content is equidistant between the top and the bottom cell borders. Now let us look at the horizontal alignment options. Left align, center align, and right align are the three options. Default is the left alignment. Let me click on the center alignment to make this text equidistant between the left and right borders. Or let me click on the right alignment to make this text right aligned. Three vertical and three horizontal alignments provide a total of nine different alignment combinations. For example, let us try top left alignment. I'm going to click on both top as well as left. Now the text is top left aligned. Top left, top center, and top right are the three top alignment options. Similarly, left middle, center middle, and right middle are the middle alignment options. Left bottom, which is the default option, center bottom, and right bottom are the bottom alignment options. In this video, I'm going to explain about wrap and merge concepts. First, I'm going to consider the wrap option. Wrap fits the overflowing cell contents within the cell boundary. You can see the wrap option here on the ribbon. Select the cell with overflowing text content and click on the wrap text. You can see that the text gets wrapped inside the cell. The text is fully visible, no overflowing, and no truncation. Next, I will explain the merge concept. You can see the merge icon just below the wrap icon here on the ribbon. If you click the down arrow next to the merge icon, you will see four options. Option at the top is merge and center, which is followed by merge across, merge cells, and unmerge cells. Let us consider these options one by one. The first option, merge and center, will combine the multiple cells and align the content to the center. Let me show you how Merge and Center works. I'm going to select cells here and then click Merge and Center. See that the cells have been merged into a single cell. If I draw a cell border, the border appears for the merged cells and its content is at the center. Merged cells behave like any other single cell in the worksheet. Long text contents in merged cells can overflow or get truncated. Like any other cell, merged cells have to be wrapped to make long text fully visible. Lastly, we can unmerge the merged cells. I'm going to select this merged cell and click the unmerge cells option. Now you can see that the combined cells become individual cells once again. In this video, I'm going to explain how to add borders to a cell. First, let me help you locate the border option. 
I'm going to the font group under the Home tab on the ribbon. You can see the border icon here on the ribbon. If you click the down arrow, various border options are visible. First, let us try the bottom border. I'm going to select a cell and click on the bottom border. Now you can see the border at the bottom side of this cell. Next, let us try the top border. If you click on the top border option, Excel will draw a border on the top side of the selected cell. Next, I'm going to cover applying borders for more than one cell at a time. Now I am selecting a group of cells. Just to show you, I'm going to select the All Borders option. You can see borders drawn on all sides of the selected cells. Lastly, I want to show you a special type of border application. Let me explain with an example by using this group of cells. Here, it doesn't make sense to use all borders. What is needed is a border around the selected group of cells. I'm going to select the cells and then select the outside border option. You can see that the borders are drawn on cell walls facing outside only. Internal cells have no borders at all. This means that the outside border option will draw the top border to some cells and the bottom border to some other cells. Some cells have either a left border or a right border. In this video, I'm going to cover how to format numbers. First, let me help you to locate the number formatting options. Go to the Home tab on the ribbon and look for the Number group. You can see a drop down box. If you click on that, you can see formatting options such as general, number, currency, accounting, date, time, percentage, fraction, scientific, and text. First, let me explain the default format of cell content. This content in this cell is in default format, which is called the general format. General format means it has no format specifications. It could be text or number, etc. Now, let me explain the number format. For this, I'm going to select the next cell and change the format to number. You can see that the number has two decimal places, which is the default format. If we want, we can click here to decrease the decimal places. The left icon is to increase the decimal places. We can click as many times to set the desired decimal place. The next format is the percentage format. In this example, 0 0.252 is represented as a decimal value. Let us change it to a percentage format. There are two ways to do it. The first way is to click on the percentage option right here. You can see the value is displayed as 25.20% with two decimal places. The other option is to click on the percentage icon. It displays the value and percentage without any decimal places. Now, let us focus on indicating currency for numerical values. Here is an example where we have a numerical value to be indicated in currency. I'm going to click here and select the currency format. You can see that the currency format will also display values in two decimal places. Let us now turn to formatting of dates. Please note that Excel internally stores the date as an integer so that it is easier to count the number of days between two dates. I'm going to select the cell and select short date. The corresponding date for integer 1 is 1st January 1900. The corresponding date for integer 2 is 2nd January 1900. Also you can see is that the short date format is a day month year format. DD represents date in two digits. MM represents month in two digits. YYYY is the year in four digits. This video covers how to freeze a row or column in a worksheet. Let me explain the problem first. When we are working on a large data set, like this one, if we scroll down or right, and when we look at a value in a cell, we don't know which record or which variable it belongs to, because the row and column headers go out of view. To overcome this inconvenience, Excel has created a freeze option. I will show where the freeze option is. Go to the View tab on the ribbon and look for the Windows group. You will find Freeze Panes icon. Click on the down arrow next to it. You will see three options, Freeze Top Row, Freeze First Column, and freeze panes. Let me begin with the freeze top row option. I want to make the column headers visible all the time. For this, I'm going to click on freeze top row. Now, you can see the column headers remain in the view despite scrolling down. The next option is freeze first column. If I scroll towards the right, you can see the order ID column is going out of view. I want to make the order ID column visible all the time. So I'm going to select the freeze first column option. 
Now you can see the order ID remains in the view despite scrolling right. But unfortunately, when scrolled down, the column headers go out of view. Therefore, both row and column headers need to be frozen. But before doing that, they must be unfrozen. There is an option called Unfreeze Panes, which is visible when any of the other three options are selected. The last option is the Freeze Panes option. This option keeps both row and column headers in the view when you scroll anywhere in the worksheet. I will show you how. Let me select Unfreeze Panes to deselect the previous selection. Now, I'm going to place the cursor in B3 and then click on the Freeze Panes option to freeze both row and column headers. And to make sure, I'm going to scroll down and right. You can see both column headers and the order ID remain in view all the time. In this video, I'm going to explain how to change column width and row height. For the purpose of illustration, let us consider the sales data set. First, let me explain adjusting column width for text contents. You can see in the region column, text content like Central America and Caribbean is not fully visible. There are two ways to adjust the column width. One way is to auto fit width and the other way is to get a fixed width. First, let me explain auto fit width setting. I'm going to select the column region. Then, I will hover over the right hand border of the column. When the pointer changes to a thin cross, I will double click. Now, you can see that all the contents in the column region are fitting inside the cell and are fully visible. Now, let me show you fixed width settings. I'm going to right click on the column and then select the column width option. Here, I will enter 24 in the width field and press OK. Now, the column width is set to the value 24. This option is useful when you want to have equal width columns in your Excel table. Now, I'm going to show you problems with the number contents. For the sake of illustration, let me undo the column width adjustments. You can see hash symbols in column H. You may think there are no values, but all hash. But when I click on the cell H2, you can see the date. It is because the column width is too small to display the date in full. Excel displays hash whenever the column width is too small to fit either date or number contents. You can see the dates when I double click on the edge of the column. Lastly, I want to show you how to adjust width for multiple columns in one go. First, I'm going to select multiple columns. Then, I will double click on any column to adjust the column width. Now you will see that the width for all selected columns are adjusted at once. Next, I'm going to explain how to adjust row height. Just like column width, there are two ways to adjust the row height. I will show only the auto fit option. Let me use this data set for the purpose of illustration. Assume that we want column width to be untouched and that we have to adjust row height to make the content fully visible. I will hover over the edge of the row and when the thick cross becomes a thin cross, I will double click. You can see that the row height is adjusted automatically and cell contents are fully visible. I can do this for multiple rows at a time. First, I'm going to select multiple rows. Then, I'm going to double click on the edge of any one of the rows. You can see that the row height of all the rows are automatically adjusted and the cell contents are fully visible. 